Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends, and welcome to your match highlights of Trimley Red Devils at home. Uh, Stennett's playing field in Trimley St. Mary to take on Sudbury uh, under 18s. Gonna do it a little bit differently to how we normally do it. See if uh, see if it comes off well, see if you enjoy it. And if you do enjoy it at home, do hit that like button, do subscribe to the YouTube channel and let us know in the comments that you've enjoyed what we're about to present to you. Um, and if you'd like more of them, etc. etc. So joining me uh, while the match highlights play in the background will be none other than uh, manager Craig Chidlow. Craig, hello. How are you? Hello there. I'm very good, thank you. And yourself? Good. Yeah, I'm very well, thank you. Looking forward to sort of picking your your brains as we as we go through the next you know ten or ten or so minutes. Um, playing the Sudbury footage there in the background. Obviously, just had that friendly the weekend just gone. From your perspective, how did it go? What did you take away from it? Um, yeah, I didn't think there was an awful lot between the teams. I had it on good authority that Sudbury were they were most of their second years, so they're better under 18s players. Um, and I think for a lot of the game, we, we matched them. There wasn't an awful lot of goal goal chances, I didn't think. Mm. You know, the odd one that you'll see here. But actual real clear-cut chances, I think both teams managed to restrict uh, each other to very few, to be fair. Um, but they are a very fit bunch. Um, and I think perhaps their fitness just told in the end, just got on the last sort of 15 minutes, they probably just got on top of us a little bit. We, I mean... We'd never like to make excuses, but we I've never known it before. We ended up with five injuries. Uh, really? Within, within 10 minutes of the second half, we'd had all five. We had two just before half time, one at half time, and two more uh, 10 minutes in the second half. So luckily, I'd brought on two, brought along two 17 year old boys from the Saturday youth team on the morning. And um, mm. yeah, I was going to give them 15, 20 minutes at the end. They got 35 minutes each, more or less. So <laughs> that was oh, good wow. for them. And it, to be fair to them, they were brilliant. They, they put so much effort into it and worked really hard. So it was good. So they gave a good account of themselves in, in the 35 that they got. Uh, the pitch obviously can't have helped matters. It's, it's been such a dry summer that it looks. It, it, it looks probably how it feels, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, it's quite, that's probably, yeah, probably one reason why we're picking up these minor injuries and things, but um, it's it's the same all over the place, I think. Um, it's, I mean, there is, it doesn't look great there with the camera, but to be fair, it's not, it's not, it's not like a real hard, well, it is hard, but there is grass on there, you know, you mm. can't really see it there, but yeah, it's not too bad. Once the rain arrives, Stennis is an absolute lovely playing surface. Obviously, I grew up in Trimley St. Mary, so I know, I know it fairly well, having played on it uh, against Trimley Red Devils many, many times. When, when you're building your pre-season schedule, what, what, what particular things are you looking to get out of it? How has it gone so far as a as a whole? Uh, pre-season's probably the same for most senior clubs. It's always a bit of a nightmare. A player unavailability, Um constantly all week trying to get enough players for the game, especially when you're only yeah. two teams, um, desperately not wanting to let the opposition down. So, as I say, I mean, up until Saturday morning, we literally had two substitutes for that game. And then Saturday morning, I found out the under-18s didn't have a game, so we got two lads along. Um, but we generally, I generally, rightly or wrongly, want tough opposition for pre-season friendly. So, Test yourself. Um, yeah, to test the cells. I think maybe next year I might go half and half, but because it seems <laughs> it's constant. But I mean, we have lost some players in the summer, um, two or three good ones. We've brought two or three young lads in who are really coming along nicely. Um, so I don't think we're not massively missing them players. We're playing some really good football in the games that we're playing, but we're just not quite got the cutting edge at the moment um, to put, put the ball in the net, if you like. But really, there's nothing between the teams. Framlingham, that there was not a lot between the teams there. Um, Ransom's first game of the season. Uh, it's always a tough first game for both teams. But yeah, I've been I've been really pleased. The boys have given 120% every game and yeah. they, they try to play out from the back, which is what we do at Trimley. I've got, a, I have got an awful lot of young lads. Um, most, there's not very many over 23, 22, 23. Wow. You know, we, might, we might have two or three 30 year olds. That's about it. Um, and so I want them to learn how to play football the right way. Sometimes it's it's very easy just to go long and try and get a result that way, but we I don't really want to be doing that with these young lads. It's one of the things I've picked out. Obviously, I've been putting together the match highlight package for a couple of weeks now. One of the things I've really picked out early doors is just, just your ability to play out from the bat, the passing, 
that you try and encourage evidently at, at Trimlin. It's interesting to hear you say that that's how you want to bring that ethos and install it into the young players. Is someone like, you know, your captain, Sam, is he, is he instrumental in helping those young players through? He's excellent. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's a really good talker on the pitch. We struggle in that department as well. You know, we've probably got two, three players that really do a lot of good talking, the older heads, because that's what older heads do, isn't it? It's the young mm. ones are very quiet generally. But yeah, he's constantly talking to them or telling them, helping them and very, very influential player for me. Absolutely. I see uh, you, your goalkeepers made, made a couple of decent saves in pre-season already. Um, I'll try and pick out where I can some of those saves because I, I think they, they deserve to be uh, shown as much as, as the goals do. Uh, you said about taking chances. You, you've got a couple of chances in each friendly where, you know, on a different day would have been would have been converted into the bottom corner. Yeah, the it was the same last season, to be fair. I, every game we played, I'd say we generally created more chances than the opposition. Um, I don't expect players to be putting the ball in the net every chance they get. Otherwise, they wouldn't, they'd be playing a much higher standard. But, yeah, we, we don't tend to put the, the amount of chances the ratio of chances to goals we don't tend to do that um so if there's any top goal scorers out there wants that opportunity let me know but um... there you go there you go <laughs> there, there you go i like it i like it if you're out there you you gary goals as it were get mm. in touch with with craig and trimley well, i'm not our, saying go on. i think our video cam uh, our, our games show that as well i mean we i know that we put every shot chance on there so you get a good 10 minutes of highlights mm. so i think you can see i'm not just making it up that we do create a lot of good chances throughout a game oh you do oh yeah you absolutely do yeah one of the things i've been sort of surprised about if i'm brutally honest in the early doors just just the, the quality of the chances that are evidently are created and i'm looking forward to seeing how that goes into the season and i'm looking forward for one as at, at, at looking at the season footage you've made a couple of uh, additions in terms of your your backroom staff over the last week or so, Adam Potter and, and Jerome Laidlaw coming in. What 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 are they going to bring to, to Trimley, Craig? Um, I was saying earlier how hard it can be, especially pre-season, trying to get things organised and stuff. And mm. sometimes as managers, we we start to wonder, is it really worth the hassle? But I mean, those those thoughts are few and far between. And when I lost Scott at the end of last season, I mean, he, he he's moved to the other side of Colchester, so it wasn't feasible for him to be travelling up here for games and for training. Um, but when I lost him, it was a case of, you know, can I get somebody in? Uh, to be fair, Adam and Jerome were the first two that I, I tried. Um, and they couldn't commit at the time for one reason or another. And I just decided that I'd just have to go it alone. I was happy to go it alone. I, all my youth football was generally on my own. But it's not ideal because there's a lot of work needing doing. When I got chatting to Adam and Jerome, their, their enthusiasm and just... I just felt that there were two guys that I think I could really get on well with. And it's been really positive, the chats that I've had with them. And it's given me a new buzz, a new sense of, you know, yes, let's get going with the season again. And I think they feel the same way. So, um, yeah, for me, really, really pleased that they both decided that they can they can come on board and help help me out. Yeah, I don't think motivation will be a, will be a, a fa an, an issue. You know, Ad, I spoke to Adam a couple of times I'm I'm not as mobile as I used to be, but I certainly wanted to run through brick walls for him. He's a very passionate uh, football. Is his life almost? You know, he really puts that centrally. Yes, exactly. Yeah, he says <laughs> he was telling us that you know he's Saturdays is his day, and that everybody knows that in his family. So if anyone doesn't like it, it's tough. But it's not just Saturdays, is it? It's the whole week half the time talking to players, doing this, doing that. So yeah, yeah. we we all know that. Yeah. And then you get the media team try and hook you for a 10-minute conversation and then it's something else. I know, I know. So this weekend, you're travelling uh, to Skull in, in, in latest friendly action. What are you expecting from, from, from the trip? Well, Skull are the same equivalent standard to us. They're equivalent to the SOL Senior League in the Foster's Anglian League uh, in Nor Nor Norfolk. Um, it's going to be a tough game. We know it's going to be a tough game. I've got Two, two, two or three players can't play, including my influential captain, as you say, Sam. He's picked up an injury. Oh dear. Um, That's so the age, Sam. I'm going, I'm going, going with a scratch team, but I, I, I say a scratch team, and you know, another 18-year-old boy that's 
make coming along for the first time. Um, I've got three subs, um, so it's going to be a tough game. But if the pre- rest of the preseason friendlies are anything to go by, it should be a good close game, and I would imagine could go either way. We went there two years ago. Uh, we won two nil two years ago, but again, that game could have gone either way. So I know it's going to be a tough game. I think they beat Clayton in a preseason friendly recently. So, and as yeah. as you were saying, what you wanted from your from your schedule, those tough games, those real proper tests uh, to get you ready for SIO action, and you kick off the season uh, to whom and when, Craig? For those that are watching it, are perhaps the, you know the the casual viewers. Yeah, uh, Wickham Market away, just come up from Division One, haven't they? And I know they've got a very strong team. Twentieth um, of August, that one. So it's at their ground. Perfect. 24 August. We'll be sure to cover it on the channel and hopefully we'll get Craig on a couple of more times. We can discuss uh, as the season approaches and then through the course of the season. Craig, I thank you ever so much for your time. No, thank you very much. Cheers. Don't forget, hit the subscribe button, the like button, and of course, leave a comment if you've seen something or heard something or if you Gary goals out there and you, you want to answer Craig's plea for goals chorus. We'll catch you soon. 